So here we have a fragrance from the brand Goldfield & Banks. You know I've covered this brand on my channel so many times in the past. I truly love so many of their fragrances from Pacific Rock Moss to their Lavender Offering and they just have so many wonderful fragrances, Bohemian Lime, and of course they're available at Perfumology, not a sponsored video. But in today's episode, we're gonna be going over Silky Woods Elixir. This is a composition by Olivier Cresp, what an amazing perfumer. I had the pleasure of meeting him in person. I'm excited to give you my thoughts on this fragrance, so make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin today's episode and I give you my thoughts on Silky Woods Elixir by Goldfield and Banks, I'm gonna tell you about the smell, the performance, longevity, comparisons, what I personally think of the fragrance, how it stacks up against other Goldfield and Banks compositions. But I wanna start the video off first by saying that if you're a fan of fragrance-related content, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon, and also give this video a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. It would really mean a lot to me. So here we're dealing with a fragrance that has so many incredible ingredients to it. Of course, there is vanilla, there is Peru balsam, if I'm not mistaken. So there are some other resins in here. There's a touch of incense, there's saffron, it's a little spicy. You have this melange of notes. There's also moss and clear wood. Clear wood is used as an alternative to patchouli, but it seems to go in a few different directions. At times it's spicy, at times it's resinous and thick, it's sweet and vanillic. And then there's also orris root. So it's a little starchy, it's a little waxy. It truly is a gorgeous fragrance. So I'm looking forward to giving you my thoughts on the smell. Let's start things off with a quick look at the presentation first. So right in the opening of this fragrance, you are going to get this sort of ambery accord. And it's an amber accord with a touch of vanilla, but nothing overwhelming. There's a bit of powderiness about it too. And I've smelled many powdery ambers throughout the years, but I don't think the powderiness is coming from the amber accord itself. I do get, you know, the balsam of Peru. I think it's either Peru balsam or Tolu balsam, but both of them have a vanillic overtone with a medicinal approach. And I think they both smell quite interesting to say the least. But here in this fragrance, they have this sort of meditative charm about it that I think is so gorgeous and it's so well done. You're also dealing with the orris root. And I think the orris root is really just one of the star players here. You have orris root combined with saffron. And I'm trying to really focus on the notes that I think are coming across quite strongly because there's a lot of supporting roles in here. But these two ingredients, the saffron and the orris, really steal the spotlight momentarily. So the saffron gives it this touch of leather and it's really sophisticated and intricate. And there are some other darker woods in here. Of course, there's Gaiac wood. There's also agar wood. And I think I probably get more Gaiac wood than agar wood, especially when you tend to have that association with agar wood and a lot of some of the rough and tumble varieties on the market. Not necessarily getting that, but the saffron is there, the orris root is there. So here's the thing. A lot of people associate the smell of iris with lipstick right? It kind of has this aroma that people equate to the smell of like a cosmetic bag or lipstick. It's kind of waxy. And I think it is a bit waxy, but I don't think it smells like lipstick. I think it smells more powdery, more almost like dusty. It kind of has this, this sort of vintage feel to it. And I think you have that ancient quality of the saffron coming in. And so it, it almost gives you like this sense of nostalgia, whether you've, you know, consumed saffron in the past or not. It, it just remind you of some of these, you know, treasures that are found on earth. And I think it's a beautiful effect that is produced here. But you are going to get this um, sort of balsam driven amber accord, just a touch of vanilla, nothing too strong, a little powdery, a little dusty, a little waxy, not lipsticky, but you have enough of that saffron to give it this leathery approach with this earthy dry down. It's really incredible. Now, of course, as far as the name of the fragrance is concerned, Silky Woods Elixir. It does have this silky approach, right? And of course, we're dealing with with an olfactory texture, so it's a little synesthetic in nature, right? How do you attribute a texture to a smell? But at the same time, it does kind of put you in the mindset of something very smooth, very silky, very elegant, posh, something that is not rough around the edges. And that's why I said I'm not getting a whole lot of agarwood and I'm not getting a whole lot of really like 
dark, astringent, or even, you know, camphorous ingredients, sometimes camphorous ingredients can kind of have that abrasive effect on the senses. I'm not getting that. So here we're dealing with a perfume that is very smooth, silky, very elegant, very high quality as far as the raw materials are concerned. And look, Olivier Cresp, he did Noah by Cacharel. He did Angel by Thierry Mugler. He did Sedley by Parfum de Marly. So he's an amazing perfumer, one of my favorites. And of course, he has his own perfume brand, which is called Acro. So he's done Bake and he's done Awake and he's done just so many phenomenal fragrances. Try this one out by Goldfield and Banks. I think it's awesome. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. So first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, super unique fragrance. I mean, this fragrance smells like nothing else on the market. I think I saw online, somebody was comparing it to Ombre Nomade by Louis Vuitton and it's like, no. Not really. This one really stands on its own two legs. It's a beautiful original fragrance and I'm looking forward to you trying it if you can. I know Perfumology sells samples. I'm almost 100% confident that they are carrying this one. They pretty much have everything from the line, but the overall smell, very pleasant, very easy to get along with. Of course, if you're not into spicy fragrances, you're gonna have to try this, right? Because there is a generous amount of saffron in here. Longevity, 10 plus hours. Projection, really good for the first hour of application, radiated well well beyond an arm's length. It became an elbow's length scent right around hour seven, a skin scent right around hour 10 or something like that. In terms of the versatility, perfectly unisex in my opinion. I think this one would appeal to more of a niche connoisseur. So perhaps somebody who's a little bit older, a little bit more experienced in dealing with niche perfumes and some of the perfumes that encapsulate the more artistic side of the industry. I think this one is great for formal occasions as opposed to casual, especially if you're paying a niche tier you know, price for an item, you wanna wear it during a special occasion. I wear my fragrances whenever I want. So again, don't even listen to me. These are just recommendations. Wear what makes you happy when it makes you happy. And this is great for the colder weather. So fall and winter, especially if you live in a cold climate like I do. And in terms of the presentation, I love the darkness of it. That sort of um, brown gold, you know, color palette is really well done. My final verdict on this fragrance is, if you're looking for a perfume that is silky, it's smooth, it's elegant, high quality raw materials put together by a master perfumer, has and possesses originality, please, please try this one out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you took something of value or learned something new from today's episode. If you did, please do consider showing your support by subscribing to the channel, hit the bell, and give this video a thumbs up for the algorithm. It would really mean a lot to me. Thanks again for watching. I love you all, and we'll see you tomorrow with a new episode. Bye.